hits like Coca-Cola, Levi Strauss, Johnny Carson and Mickey Mouse. The first star was James Dean, Elvis Presley and he's still the king. Some things are only imitatable, you can't be that original. Friends and foes, welcome to a very special edition of Back of the Cereal Box with me, Johnny, and George Bueller. Good morning, campers. Bueller, Bueller, <laughs> Bueller. I haven't heard that before. Never? What, what movie are you talking about? <laughs> George is the host of Fanatic Forum on the Cereal Box Network, and of course, I'm the host of Back of the Cereal Box. You are. And uh, we are here live at the uh, National Corvette Comic and Toy Show in Bowling Green, Kentucky. That's right. And George, it is Memorial Day weekend. It is. And for a very special Memorial Day back of the cereal box episode, mm -hmm. I thought it would be fun for you and I to do a taste test ah. of Captain Crunch red, white, and blue in honor of our servicemen. You know, it's very patriotic. Yes. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna give this a taste test and see what we think. Now, the first thing that I noticed when I opened the box is it smells really good. Ooh, yeah. That's the first thing you got to take in the bouquet, right? It, it kind of just smells like a Crunch Berry cereal almost. You it know? does, and it, and it may be that, but we'll we'll find out here in a minute. We'll give you some. We'll give me some, and um, you know, one of the things I've always loved about um, Captain Crunch is that Captain Crunch still has cool games and puzzles and stuff on the back of the cereal box. That's true, it does. And on this one, we've got a camping Mad Lib. <laughs> and we will, we will play that Mad Lib in a bit. So, um, Captain Crunch, red, white, and blue. Here we go. Let's give it a taste test and see what we think. Mm, very nice. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Totally tastes like Crunch Berries. See, this this tastes different than what I expected, though. With, with, well, there's a little more pronounced fruit in there. Like, well, there's from, a little something extra in there. From the smell, I, I from the um, bouquet, <laughs> I really anticipated this to taste more like fruit, but I definitely taste the Captain Crunch flavor, yeah. too. So, I guess this is basically um, just reformatted... Captain Crunch with Crunch Berries. Yeah, but it almost okay. got a little more fruit flavor in there. Like it's, there's, there's something that's a little, a little fruitier that's not quite Crunch Berries. It's a little something different. So, so they, they are bringing something a little original to the table if you are a Crunch connoisseur. Now, here's what I gotta ask. Mm. So, everyone tells me that Captain Crunch tears up the roof of your mouth. I've never experienced that. Have you? Um, no, because uh, I have a uh, roof of my mouth that is made of uh, very firm skin, apparently. So I've never had this issue. Now, of course, I always say if you, you know, find yourself, you know, being, you know, tortured by Captain Crunch, but you still enjoy it, I always recommend an old-fashioned King Vitamin if you can still find it. So King Vitamin is delicious, and you know they just reissued um, Quiz. Mm-hmm. And I finished. I have off, some in my uh, cereal box. Camera. Yeah, I finished off the last of my Quisp this week, and I was trying to figure out what Quisp tastes like because I thought it tasted a little bit like Captain Crunch, made by the same company, Quaker Oats. Same with King Vitamin. A lot lighter though. It is, and and I finally figured it out that what I'm tasting is the malt. Yeah. Because it's a malted rice cereal, and um, you can taste that malt flavor, which I actually really love. Mm -hmm. I really love. This is this is this is respectable. This is pretty good. I like this, this is good. You know, I always thought they brought Quiz back on numerous occasions. They haven't brought Quake back. I mean, it's like, it, why not? They're like they were always the companion cereals. They always would do like you know competing commercials. Quisp is better than Quake, and you know all that kind of stuff. Well, and you remember those commercials? Yeah. They they were actually um, short cartoon episodes. Right. Okay. They were made by the same guys that did Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah. And I've never had Quake. I've never had. Quake. I never have either. 
and I would love to try Quake. I'd love to know what Quake tastes like. You know, the thing was, I always kind of heard they were very similar. That's kind of why they got rid of Quake and just kept Quisp, because it was the more popular cereal. But apparently they were very similar in nature, so I don't know. Hmm. Either way, though. Yeah, but this is very... I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of this. I normally like Captain Crunch and especially Crunch Berries. And frankly, I kind of miss when it was just all just the red Crunch Berries. I, I, you know, I was like, I know we've got the multicolored Crunch Berries now, but I always kind of just like it with just the red Crunch Berries. And what we get... Oops, oh, I'm sorry. I got things over here. And race a Hot Wheel, win a prize. Okay, so you get to race a Hot Wheel... And <clears throat> so come around this side. Come around here. Pick pick your car. You've got Harley Quinn. You've got uh, who is this? This is uh, just a generic. You got the Batmobile, uh, Gotham PD, or the Joker. George, you pick one that you want to race. Uh, let's see here. Well, I'll, I'll let our I'll let our guest pick first here. I'll go for the center. All right, going to go for the Batmobile. I'm going for Gotham PD there because you got to represent. All right, all right. So go ahead and uh, let's take the other three off. And uh, I think the lever is right here. So our our uh, you ready? On your mark. You ready? On your mark. Get, get set. set. Go. go. Oh. Which yeah, one won? Right. I think we had a tie. Really? I I. I, I no, two. Oh, number two. Oh, that was you. Okay. The Batmobile won. That means you get to pick anything from the table. He won the Star Wars Millennium Falcon book. How cool is that? Awesome! <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. this, that's a little bit of what we do when we're live here. It's a live action vendor booth. And, we're interactive, um, folks. That's right. So, George, I I've got to ask you a question. Yes, sir. So, a couple of weeks ago... Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned to my co-hosts, yep. I, I mentioned Brock's Bridge Mix candy, yep. and they had no idea what I was talking about. Those youngins. No know. one had ever heard of this. Just pat them on their little heads, I'm sorry. Do, do you, you remember Bridge of Mix? Of course I do, yeah. Well, I immediately went on a hunt. <laughs> I was like, okay, we've got to remedy this, we've got to introduce this to our co-hosts, mm -hmm. and lo and behold... Brock's doesn't make it anymore. Or at least I couldn't find it anywhere in Middle Tennessee. But I did find at Ollie's Get It For Less. Ah. Zachary Bridge Mix. And it's the exact same thing. That's cool. I think. I mean, We're about to how, how find you, how out. How could you vary from Bridge Mix? I mean, you know, I know. I know. I'm like, it's kind how, of a universal recipe, I would think. How, how do you not know what Bridge Mix is? And and so here's what we're gonna do. We're we're gonna we're gonna try some Zachary Bridge Mix. Far out. And and George is gonna go home 200 pounds heavier this weekend. This is a cheat day for me. So <laughs> you know, I just I can't eat the whole thing. But a couple bites here and there ain't gonna hurt. So dark dark and milk chocolate covered almonds mm. and raisins. Yum. Oh yeah. That's exactly what mm -hmm. I remember. Yep. However. Here was the thing. Did you ever play this game when you were a kid? Avoid the raisins? No. No, you like the raisins. I love raisins, yeah. See, I like raisins, but not raisins and chocolate. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So I was always playing this, try not to get the raisins. <laughs> I didn't have that problem. Because, you know, raisins are uh, nature's candy. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you don't care. <laughs> now, one of these... One of these is supposed to be a cream. I don't come across that one yet. Yeah. Mm, that one, that one. The big ones. There's a caramel one there. That was good. My first one was a raisin one. So see, I got what I want. I can't what I can't. I'm done, folks. <laughs> this is this is phenomenal. Yeah. And you know, my my wife was like, "Oh, that's an old person's candy." I'm like, "No, it is not." Chocolate, nuts, and raisins? I mean, yes, it is a classic candy, but it's not specifically for old people. No. Anybody can eat it. Yeah. Young ones, old ones, doesn't matter. So, if you want bridge mix, Ollie's has it. There you go. Zachary's bridge mix. It tastes exactly like Brock's. It does, yeah. And I'm going to be willing to bet. I'm going to be willing to bet $100 that Zachary 
is actually owned by Brox. You're, you're probably right. It's like a subsidiary. Yeah. 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 And they, they manufacture this specifically for the, you know, Dollar Tree, Ollie's, and whatnot. Yeah. So, so um, it's still alive and well, folks. It is. <laughs> Now, George, one of the things we do every Saturday morning mm -hmm. on Back of the Cereal Box is reach in to the box of cereal, just like we did when we were kids, uh -huh. and pull out the prize inside. Uh -huh. And this morning, okay. I'm going to reach in, and I've got the Ooh. Marvel Legends Black Widow. Oh, wow. I got this here at the convention. And this was something I've been on the hunt for for a while. Yeah. I definitely need this on my Marvel Legends shelf. So, super excited about this. Uh, the price was right. He had it marked at only uh, 25 bucks. And you're a comics fan, so I you am. you probably remember this era of the Avengers. Basically, this is when Black Widow was in charge of the Avengers. That's she right. She was the chairman. Uh, I love the leather jacket look, the kind of early 90s era of Avengers. So... Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, she was the uh, leader, and then um, Black Knight, Cersei, Crystal, and Hercules, and the Vision was the team, and sometimes Hank Pym would come in, and Captain America would come in. Sometimes Thor. You know. Yep, and um, but they, they it was written uh, by Bob Harris, mm -hmm. and uh, the art was Steve Epting and Tom Palmer. Yeah. And um, I loved, loved this era of the Avengers. This That's was cool. This was a period where I was literally on the edge of my seat to read the next issue every yeah. month. I could not wait. And it's been a long time since I've really had that feeling from a comic series. So um, this is going on the Marvel Legends shelf Very nice. in the virtual rec room. I'm so, so excited. And um, did you get any new loot? I did. I did get some stuff. What did you get? Show us. Well, let's see here. Hey, Ben. Uh, ben has come by. Ben Blankenship is here, one of our author friends. Uh, my new loot I got here is, uh, I, I, you know, like I said, we've barely been here for an hour. That's and right. I've already got some comics already. So, uh, let's see here. Avengers uh, 159. That's right here. Lovely copy of that. Got some Daredevil books here. I love this one here. This issue is written by Harlan Ellison here. And then love this Klaus Jansen cover right here. That is maybe my favorite Daredevil cover. Yeah. So that's a beauty there. So, yeah. And that's just, you know, that's just the start of it. And, you, probably... and you got great prices on that. Like, I did. Five, ten bucks each. Yes. And matter of fact, uh, I have the card here. Uh, all right. Hey, it's a local vendor here, uh, the Archives. Here we go. This is right here. The archives here in Bowling Green. Uh, apparently, they're just right down the road. So I don't know. I might. Uh... I never even knew that they were here, and I, I don't live that far away. I live about forty-five minutes away. Yeah, I'm about an hour away myself. And yeah. um, so that might be worth a trip over to their store mm -hmm. after the convention closes mm -hmm. today at four. Yeah. I wonder how late they're open. That's, you know what? That's a good idea. Uh, we've got a bunch of cereal here on the table. We do. Um, and I've got, I brought along the brand new Trix Tracks. All right. Have you, have you, are you a Trix fan? I mean, you know, Trix are, they're okay. I mean, they are for kids. Yes. But, you know, uh, I, you know, I've had some tricks from time to time. This has marshmallows in it. Really? Do you want to try some? Sure. Let's give it a run. We're going to do a Trix Tracks taste test now. You want a clean bowl? Ah, I've still got the same bowl here. All right. Fine. All right. No. I, I ain't fancy. You want some uh, refreshed milk? Uh, yes, please. Yes. All right. We've got content for two weeks now. <laughs> this will be great. All right, here. So, Trix Tracks here. All right, now we are going to try some Trix Tracks. This is dinosaur print shaped Trix with marshmallows. Tasty. Yes. I mean, it's Trix with marshmallows. So here's my thing with Trix, okay? Mm -hmm. Trix is fruity and delicious. Trix is for kids. Mm -hmm. But when just before I put it in my mouth uh -huh. and shoot it across the room, it smells burnt. Hmm. Do, do you experience the same thing? Wow. You were not kidding. It does smell like it's burnt. That's crazy. Now, 
It doesn't taste anything like that. No, it doesn't. So I wonder if that's like a you know a reaction to the milk. So like you get a different taste when you're. There we go. I'm starting some dry here. Yep, I'm just filling them out there. It is definitely definitely a different taste. Yeah. Signature dry. It is compared to with the milk. Science. I know. I know, but um. Yeah. I mean, it's not a very pronounced taste. It's very subtle, but. You can taste it. Tastes a little different, dry. That's crazy. That is weird. <laughs> the only thing I do every day here, folks. See, it's all about fun and education here on Back of the Circle Box. Yeah. Now, between the two, mm. Captain Crunch mm. and Tricks. Right. I'm going with Captain Crunch. Uh, yeah, Captain Crunch is normally my standby if I'm going for a sweet cereal anyway, or one of my standbys. So I would pick this. I would pick that up again before I would do the tricks tracks. But this is not bad though. I like this, but not normally what I would go for. But enjoyable nonetheless. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Now here's what I love about this cereal mm. is that on the back of this cereal box it has these cutouts to make a diorama. Nice. And you don't cut them all the way out. You cut them enough to fold them up, mm -hmm. and then the box becomes like a a diorama where you can like do photos or shoot a movie or have your own adventure. There you go. I love anything that sparks creativity because you know that was us, right? Totally. We're we're called back to the cereal box because we're of an age where we didn't have iPhones or iPads at the breakfast table on Saturday mornings. We were. Reading the back of the cereal box, that was our newspaper, that was our world, that, you know, opened up our entire existence to uh, games and toys and Absolutely. comics and cartoons and kung fu movies and kaiju and all of the Saturday all morning of stuff. stuff came from the back of the cereal box for us. So, um, to see, you know, manufacturers doing cool games on the back of the cereal box again and on regular tricks, I showed this off a couple of weeks ago. They actually have a game that you play with the pieces of the tricks. Oh, that's awesome. And move across the board. It's a race. And you got the Cocoa Bird, and you got the uh, the dog from Cookie Crisp. Yeah. So, uh, that's cool. Yeah, so that's a lot of fun. And then on the back of Captain Crunch, we've got a Mad Lib. <laughs> oh, nice. So, I think we need to do the Mad Lib. All right, all right. All right. So... I'm going to ask you to give me the, um, oh, you know what? It doesn't ask whether it should be a noun or a, uh, it's or a verb. Just literally making it up as we go along. So, George, I'm not sure how we're supposed to play this Mad Lib because there's no, there's no prompt for what to fill in here. I, I think I think quality control missed this. Yeah, it's like an English teacher's nightmare here, you know? So, fun at, fun at Camp, Camp Captain Crunch. Um, fireflies make their own fireworks. How many can you find? Oh, so we're supposed to find the fireflies. Okay, so there's, there's a bunch. Two, two oh, different games look here. here. Look who's hiding. Oh, man, that's Quisp. Right here, we got Quisp hiding in one of the tents. Ah. Oh, that's hysterical. Is Quake on there, too? No. Uh, I don't see him. That's funny. We just threw a little Easter egg in there. How many things wrong can you find in 60 seconds? There's like a, you know, a, like... Spot that Captain Crunch has the uh, the sandals on. Anyway, so yeah. the Mad Libs. I don't know how we fill this in. Uh, well, let's read it and let's decide. Okay. Ready for rhyme time. Oh, ri we're supposed to rhyme. Okay. Hooray for summertime. It's so much blank. Okay, so what are we supposed to rhyme? That's it's like, it, it, We're supposed to rhyme something. What are we rhyming with? <laughs> Hooray for summertime. It's so much blank here at blank camp. Let's go blank in the sun. You know, we could get really naughty with this. We could. Yeah. Or really frustrated at the same time. I, I'm, I'm more frustrated right now. <laughs> trees to be and trees to be blank and blank to be one. Swimming and blank. It's fun on the blank. Blank and fireworks, we hope there's a ton. Then blank by the fire camp when it's all said and done. That one I know. There you go. Said right. and done. Okay. All right. Maybe we work backwards. 
you guys, you believe we can vote? <laughs> Here we go. Uh, trees to be chopped and kills to be won. There you go. That, wait, I right, no, that go in dark real quick. No, hang on. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I play a little too many video games, yeah, so. All right, we're going to put the Mad Libs away <laughs> for another day. I um, just killed it. All right, so we have failed at Mad Libs. The directionless Mad Libs. Yeah, the Let, directionless Mad Libs. Let's qualify that first. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've showed off some good loot. We've taste tested two different cereals. It's time to play It's Kind of a Fun Story. All right. Now, you've seen us do this on air, haven't I you? I have, yes. So, I'm going to let you uh, draw a card first okay. and ask me a question. All right. So, All go right. ahead and draw one randomly. All right. We're going to go right here. Story card here. Describe a time luck was on your side. Ooh, when luck was on my side? Yeah. Ooh, that, uh, oh, I don't know. Luck, luck, when luck was on my side. I've never won anything. Mm-hmm. Um, you are a married man, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was pretty lucky. Uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Lucky or persistent. <laughs> because here's the thing. I, w so the first time I asked my wife, Mm -hmm. to marry me. Yep. I had this planned out. We were in New York City, Rockefeller Plaza, in front of the big golden statue of uh, Atlas with the wings. And, nice. Um, you know, it was going to be a movie moment. Mm -hmm. And and I asked her to marry me, and she laughed <laughs> and said, are you crazy? I'm not going to marry you. <sighs> so I persisted. For months, <laughs> maybe a year. Oh. And then finally, um, I had another big, like this big, elaborate proposal worked out. You know, because I had asked her every day, like, will you marry? Yeah. Will you marry? And she's like, maybe, probably, possibly. And, you know, I wore it down. But so I had this big, elaborate thing planned out where... Where I would, um, I was going to be on stage doing a performance, and it was an audience participation performance. I was singing the song "Longest Time" by Billy Joel, okay. and I had guys backing me up. We we had a, the whole thing. Oh, nice. Um, you know, oh, for the longest time, and I was going to bring her up, sit her on the chair, and sing to her, and then propose to her mm -hmm. at the end of the song with Smooth. the ring. Okay, it was going to be. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Until uh -oh. the day before. She's cleaning up in the apartment. Um, now, we did not live together, but she would come over and help me clean up from time to time. My mom was coming down to visit, so she was helping me clean up. Mm -hmm. And she found the ring. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. And I was like, oh, you ruined the whole thing. Oh. But I got down on my knee and asked her, and she said yes, and uh, the rest is history. Awesome. So it worked out. It <laughs> did, but, but you know, it wasn't oh, the production God. I was expecting. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask you what. I'm going right. to draw one here randomly. Okay. Let's see what we got here. All right. Have you ever witnessed a miracle? have okay um, whether or not this was a miracle or this was acting through say my own driving acumen uh, but I was 17 18 something like that so I'm still a fairly new driver at the time uh, I was with some friends of mine we're driving around Louisville Kentucky on Bardstown Road uh, this is on Derby Day and driving down our side of the road and suddenly there is a oncoming car that is in the wrong side of the road barely right towards us so um, and he's not moving not moving any so i immediately go to the opposite lane the wrong lane to avoid that car but then immediately have to get back into my correct lane to avoid another oncoming car who's in his proper lane the car is barreling towards you and you're gonna have to i basically I had to swerve out of the correct lane Go in the oncoming lane, 
and then immediately had to get back into my lane because there was cars coming the opposite way. Made it fine without a scratch. Just like just quick movement. The other friends of mine in the car are in amazement at this. At the reaction time, I'm like, it's all the reflexes, folks. All in the reflexes, like uh, uh, Jack Burton would say. Uh, yeah, and, and, uh, we were compelled to turn around and find said car and see what the problem may have been. Uh, it turned out it was an elderly gentleman, uh, and he was a little confused. Uh, so we called the authorities and got him some help to get back to his house. So, that's phenomenal. But yeah, that was um, that's better than a cup of coffee, folks. Let me tell you. <laughs> that will wake you up. <laughs> so, they are not an official sponsor yet, but it's kind of a fun story. It's a fun conversation starting game. You win points for telling stories. So, yeah. you got two points, I got two points. That's right. And um, it's, uh, it's a fun little game. And um, we recommend it. And uh, it's a great way to have conversations. Yeah. And um, It's not a competitive game whatsoever. No. It's, just, it's kind of an icebreaker. Get to know you sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, um, there, I mean, this is like thousands of questions in this box. It's, it's phenomenal. And, I mean, it, it, you know, the, the content, it's not like uh, Cards Against Humanity where no. it's a little objectionable or anything like that. It can be whatever you want it to be. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. And uh, I love it. So, uh well, listen, I think I need to do some work here at the convention. I'm, I'm the MC, and there's some events getting ready to start here in a few minutes that I've got to introduce at 11. So, um, anyway, uh, we're going to sign off for right now. Uh, thanks for watching this very special edition of Back of the Cereal Box from the National Corvette Comic and Toy Show. And we're going to leave you with some of the sights and sounds from the show right now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the back of the cereal box. Hey there, friends and foes. I am so excited here on Back of the Cereal Box to be sitting next to a legend of stage and screen, Patrick Cronin. Uh, all right, Bowling Green, this is Martin Clubba. How you doing, Martin? Uh, we're doing great. In the Corvette Museum here in uh, Bowling Green, so. Pretty excited about that. Hey there, guys and gals. I am here at the uh, at the uh, Corvette Comic and Toy Show with Wolfie D, professional wrestler extraordinaire. You guys may remember him. Extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. Wow. And sitting side by side with me is someone you should know. If you love Saturday morning cartoons as much as I do, this is the man. Robert Lamb. Hey there, friends and foes. This is Johnny with Back of the Cereal Box, and I am sitting here next to a WWE legend, Duke the Dumpster Drossy. We are here with Hannah, who is a phenomenal cosplayer from Lexington, Kentucky. All right, ready? Spin the wheel and win a prize. Let's see what you get. This is the live action vendor booth. All right, show everybody what you picked as your prize. A Candyland Color Forms game. Oh, there you go. Phenomenal. Come on down to Hitchhiker Toys in White House, Tennessee, where we've got toys for all ages. Action figures galore like DC and Marvel characters. We've got Star Wars toys and accessories. And, of course, your favorite pro wrestling action figures. Check out our huge selection of Funko Pops, along with a selection of graded Pokemon cards, vintage board games and puzzles, Hot Wheels, Matchbox cars. We've got plush toys and a great selection of Barbie and fashion toys. And if you've got some old toys laying around, bring them to us. We buy, sell, and trade, and no collection is too big or too small. Hitchhiker Toys is located conveniently at 141 Edenway Drive, Suite A in White House, Tennessee, 37188. Turn by the subway and we're located in the shopping center between White House Nutrition and White House Produce. You can't miss us. Hours are Tuesday through Saturday 
11 to 6. Sunday, 12 to 5, and closed on Monday. Make sure to visit us at hitchhikertoys.com.